The good news is you and I can find the hope. And we can find the hope in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, he made a promise to you and I that he would die and then he would come back to life. You and I know it as Easter. We just celebrated it a week ago. Now you may wonder why we celebrate every week. We celebrate on the first day of the week. You know, you and I usually call it the weekend, but really Sunday is not a part of the weekend. Sunday's the first day of the week. It's the day that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And the reason why we come and we celebrate the first day of the week is to remind us of the hope that you and I have in the person of Jesus Christ. That no matter how dark it gets, that we have hope. You see, it reminds you and I that we matter to God. And that everything around us might not be okay, but you and I are gonna be okay. See, you might feel alone, you might be alone. Maybe you had to cancel a wedding, or maybe you had to cancel a, a, a doctor's appointment, or maybe you had to cancel something very, very important to you, a vacation trip. Regardless of what you've gone through, regardless of what you're going through, here's what I want you to know. Jesus wants to intersect with your life. He wants to bring hope to you and me. And so though things around us has changed, he would say to you and me, Dwight, you don't have to be overwhelmed with fear and despair because there's hope. You see, there's been people who have gone before you and me who have experienced somewhat like you and I are experiencing. And you know what? They found hope in God. They found hope in the darkness. One man was named Habakkuk. And that's what we want to look at. Maybe you've never heard of Habakkuk. But Habakkuk lived about 600 years before Christ. And he was a very different kind of prophet because most of the prophets, they would hear from God and then they would speak to the people. But Habakkuk was a little bit different. <laughs> he was speaking on behalf of the people to God. Kind of flipped that. Because he saw things and he was experiencing things around him that raised all kinds of questions. And he was wrestling with questions that caused him to have sleepless nights, caused him no doubt to have headaches and loss of appetite. and No doubt he, did, he battled discouragement and depression. And he's literally seeing things all around him collapse. And he's asking, where, where are you, God? What are you doing? The world is falling apart. The bad guys are winning. And it's eating me up. Maybe that's how you feel today. You see, how do you handle those circumstances and situations and problems and challenges and disappointments and losses? Habakkuk kind of got frustrated with God, even angry with God. And so he's having this conversation with God, and we want to look at it. And it's a short book. It's only about three chapters long, and I would encourage you to read it because you can read it in about 10 minutes. And I would just encourage you to read over and over, and as we walk through this book, allow God to speak to you. And I want to give you a little bit of the background. Israel's two greatest kings, David and Solomon, had been reigning, and they had come to a place of where Solomon had died. And though they had led them to great prosperity and peace, now there was a disruption in the land and a civil war broke out and it divided the kingdom. The northern kingdom was Israel and the southern kingdom was Judah. And what had happened was this, Habakkuk finds himself and he's looking around 
and he sees this nation divided, and he sees Judah spiritually bankrupt, emotionally drained, ethically and morally just bankrupt. And he's asking God, what's going on? I see all of this around me. I see what's happening. Where are you, God? Aren't you gonna do something about it? Don't you see all these wrongs? It's a little bit like today, isn't it? You know, the season that we're in, I don't know about you, but I have some questions. And I'm asking God, what's going on? What's happening? What's your plan here? And Habakkuk is doing the same thing. And he's asking God to intervene. He's asking God to to do something. He's asking God to change the situation. And he kind of unleashes on God. He gets angry, he gets mad, he gets frustrated. And he's asking this question over and over again. And maybe you've been there. Matter of fact, maybe you are there. And he's asking this question, where is God? Where is God? Maybe you've asked that question. You see, Habakkuk knew that God could do something, but he wasn't, and he didn't understand it. And he was having one of those days of where you realize that, you know, your world is falling apart. It's one of those days for you and I of when we get the call from the doctor and he says it's inoperable. Or maybe the boss says to you, we no longer need you here. Or maybe it's when you get those divorce papers finalized and the lawyer calls you and says, it's done. It's that day when you realize that you're up against a huge, enormous problems and issues and really it's out of your hands. You can't do anything about it. You're praying and you're hoping that it's not out of God's hands, but you know it's out of your hands because it's out of your control. You're trying to connect with God and you're trying to figure out what's going on and why he's doing this and why he's allowing that. Maybe that's where you're at today. And Habakkuk is writing his thoughts, his journals down in his letter, and he's just lamentating, he's just crying out and sharing. But here's the good news. Habakkuk is not at the end, he's in the middle. And that's really where we're at in this season. We're not at the end. You know, the last chapter has not been written, has it? No. And so we're in the middle. Even though maybe you feel a little bit anxious and You have that tinge of feeling overwhelmed like Habakkuk and you're in the middle and you're saying, what's gonna happen? What's gonna transpire? Am I gonna make it through? And maybe you feel a little bit paralyzed. Habakkuk did. See, that's the great thing about the scripture. You know, again, if if I was putting it together, there were some parts I'd leave out. But God doesn't because he wants us to know and realize that he's faithful. And that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens in my life, that we always have hope. And Habakkuk learned that. And so I I want us just to walk through some scripture and I'm going to make some comments And I believe this is going to be very, very helpful because it's going to remind you and I that no matter how dark it gets, we always have hope because of Jesus Christ. So Habakkuk starts like this. He says, this is the message that the prophet Habakkuk received in a vision. You see, he received this vision and really it was a burden. He received a burden and he was concerned and he was taking it to bed with him and he had those sleepless nights and he was wrestling with the question, God, where are you? What's happening? Everything around me is falling apart. It's not going according to plan. I know who you are and I thought I understood you, but maybe I don't. And so he's wrestling with this question and it's tearing him apart and he's journaling down his thoughts. 
And he's in the middle of this. And he's experiencing anxiety and worry and fret. Why? Because he's a human being. Now, what you need to understand is he's a prophet, so he's a believer. And yet he's having these emotional situations that's just tearing him apart. No doubt it was a little bit like the Holocaust. I remember reading some about the Holocaust and because of what was going on, people got so angry with God that they said he must be dead or maybe he doesn't even exist because if there was a God, he wouldn't allow this massacre to happen. He surely would have prevented this. And Habakkuk is raising similar questions. If there is a God, which he knew there was, he was just frustrated. He was angry. Why are you letting this happen? And so Habakkuk is burdened with this vision. And he's asking life's most difficult questions. And you know what he does? He does something that maybe you need to do. And you might say, is it okay really to do this? It is. God's big enough. And maybe what you need to do, maybe what most of us need to do is we need to confront God honestly. Have you ever done that? You see, you can because of Jesus. You and I have a relationship with God. And we're told that we can boldly go before him. And we can confront him honestly. And that's what Habakkuk was doing because he was frustrated. He was overwhelmed. He was a little bit anxious. He was even emotional. Look what he says. He says, how long, O Lord, must I call for help? You ever experienced that? God, how many times do I have to bring your attention to this situation? And Habakkuk is basically saying, I've been asking and I'm frustrated and I'm bringing it to you again and I've been waiting a long time. When are you going to do something? When are you going to get engaged? When are you going to show up? Because it seems like you're inactive. It seems like you don't care. Anybody feeling that today? You know, maybe you would say it in this way. You know, God, I, I've put out application after application for a job and I haven't heard anything. God, I've had one miscarriage after another miscarriage. God, I, I've been sick and I've prayed and I've been anointed. God, when am I going to find a doctor who can help me? God, you know the finances that, that we're dealing with. You know the situation. Man, we're living from paycheck to paycheck. When's that going to change? God, you know the relationship that I have with my son or my dad and it's not good. Or maybe you're single and you're saying, God, when am I going to meet somebody? I've been praying to you and asking time and time again. And Habakkuk says this. He says, how long, O oh Lord, must I call for help? But you don't listen. See, Habakkuk is a man of prayer. He has a relationship with God. He's calling out to God. And yet God seems to be absent he says, I'm asking and asking and asking, but I'm not hearing anything from you. I'm bringing it to you again and again and again. But I have no response. I keep talking to you about it. You see, Habakkuk had a God-sized problem, and it's out of his hands. And yet it seems like God is aloof and indifferent. He goes on and he writes this. He says, but you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry but you do not come to save. He's basically saying, God, I'm hurting, I'm confused, and you're not answering. Are you deaf? Don't you understand? And yet, there's something about him that he understands that God will speak in time, it's just not on his timetable. And he's crying out, why don't you do something? And he's asking God to intervene. He's asking God, to deal with the evil and the wrong and the injustice that's all around him. And yet I, I kind of sense that Habakkuk is feeling that God might be a little bit indifferent. You ever felt that? When are you going to get engaged? When are you going to do something? And it's bothering him because he knows that he's done everything that he could do. He's calling on the one who can do something 
but seemingly won't do something. He knows there's a God. Maybe that describes you. You've prayed and you've prayed, and yet it seems that God doesn't hear you. Maybe you prayed for your baby to live, and your baby died. Maybe you prayed for your marriage to be restored, and she walked. Maybe you prayed for a positive report from the doctor, and you got a devastating report. Maybe you prayed for the times to end because they've been so hard and difficult and rough, and yet they seem to just continue on and on and on. And you're frustrated, and you're wondering if God is deaf, does he hear? You see, Habakkuk continues his frustration. He says, must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all of this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I'm surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. You know, maybe that's you right now. Maybe you've been living in quarantine so much with your family that, you know what, everybody just wants to argue and fight. You're saying, God, can you do something about this? (laughs) Can you help us? Can you bring a little peace to our home? He goes on and he says this. He says, the law has been become paralyzed. It's ineffective. There is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. You know what he's saying? Here's what he's saying. Maybe something that you have said before. And it's this right here. If God is good and God is in control, then why is the world so messed up? Have you ever been there? I have. You ever asked those questions? You see, Habakkuk gives us permission to ask those questions because God's not condemning him. God's welcoming the conversation. And Habakkuk is basically saying, God, it seems like you don't really care. You're not doing much when you could. And he's not only saying that, he's saying what you are doing doesn't seem fair. You see, it's okay. Listen, it's okay to talk to God in a straightforward way. I know that we have a hard time doing it with one another, right? I mean, probably most of us have a hard time having crucial conversations, even with our spouse. And so we allow the frustration to build and the anger to build. And what happens is it it destroys the relationship. And God says, I don't want our relationship to be destroyed. You see, there's something about us sometimes that we're frustrated and we don't understand why this is happening and why God isn't doing that. And so what we do is we fake the relationship. We hold it in and we pretend that everything's okay when it's not. King David of Israel, he wrote many, many Psalms in this book of where he was asking the question, why? Jeremiah, another prophet, honestly confronted God and expressed his dismay and his frustration and his heart. And guess what? God's big enough to take it because God loves you. God cares about you. And whether you've been laid off or furloughed or or maybe you're just having an argument with your spouse over the phone charger, who has it, who lost it, or maybe what you're going to watch on TV, listen, God cares and he wants to hear from you. And he invites you and I to confront him honestly and ask him, where are you? What's going on? Why is this happening? You see, maybe your biggest struggle is that you've got all this pinned up emotion. And when we have all this pinned up emotions, usually what happens is we take it out on the people around us. Do you know that abuse is on the rise? I mean, it's just skyrocketing. Why is that? Because we're angry, we're frustrated, we don't understand. When is this going to end? And God would say, I'd like for you to take your frustrations to me. (laughs) Talk to me. Don't take it out on your spouse. Don't take it out on your kids. Go ahead and say, where are you, God? God says, it's okay. It's okay. 
Now, you might not understand the answer that he gives you, all right? But he'll give you an answer. He'll give you an answer. And he will shoot square with you and me. And so maybe you're at a point in your life right now of you're wondering if God is deaf. God, are you deaf? Are you blind? Don't you see everything? See, Habakkuk's doctrine, his theology of God is giving him trouble because he, know that, he knows that God cares. He knows that God loves. He knows that God is all powerful. He knows that God is all wise. And yet he can't somehow process in his mind what's happening because he's calling out to God and his belief and his theology is throwing him a curve. Because he knows that God sees the wrong and the evil all around him. He knows that God sees everything. He knows everything. And yet he's asking God, why aren't you doing something? You're righteous. You're a judge. And Habakkuk is asking these questions. All this is going on. So he confronts God honestly. And guess what? God answers him. And to Habakkuk's credit, you know what he does? He receives God's response humbly. See, sometimes I, I, I have asked questions and I didn't get the answer that I wanted. I got truth, but I didn't get the answer that I wanted. And we're going to find out that Habakkuk received an answer that really he wasn't expecting. And really he didn't want but he heard from God. You see, you and I will always hear from God. If we confront him with our questions, he will speak to you. He will speak to me. And he did to Habakkuk. Here's what he said. The Lord replied, look around at the nations and look and be amazed for I am doing something in your own day. God is saying, it might seem like I'm deaf and blind. I'm not. It might seem like I don't care. It's not true. I'm doing something in your day, something you wouldn't believe even if someone told you about it. Wow. This is God's response to Habakkuk. Habakkuk was asking a question. He was saying, God, do you see? And now God is asking Habakkuk, do you see? I'm doing something in your day. Open up your eyes. It's there. I'm bigger than what's happening around you. It may seem like I'm deaf. It may seem like I'm blind, but I'm not. I haven't just wound up the world just to let it go off on its own. No, that's not me. I'm a God who cares. I'm a God who loves. I'm a God who's at work. And what I'm going to do is going to blow you away. It's going to be incredible. And it will happen very soon, he says. Because I'm doing it right now. Look what he says. He says, I'm raising up the Babylonians, a cruel and violent people. They will march across the world and conquer other lands. Be careful what you ask, God. Be careful what you pray for. Because when you address God, when I address God, he's going to answer you and me. And he says, I'm raising up the Babylonians. You know who they are? They're people who you wouldn't want to go on vacation with. They are ruthless. They make their own rules. They do their own thing. He goes on and tells us a little bit about them. They are notorious for their cruelty. And they do whatever they like. Their horses are swifter than cheetahs. And fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their charities charge from far away. He's saying these people are just nasty. They're they're just going to overcome you. They're going to overwhelm you. They're going to destroy you. He says this. He says like eagles they will swoop down and devour their prey. Oh, they come all bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind, sweeping captives ahead of them like sand. They just come and they just pick people up and take them away just like a bucket of sand. He says they scoff at kings and princes and they scorn all their fortresses. They simply pile 
ramps of earth against their walls and capture them. They sweep past like the wind and are gone. Then he says this, but they are deeply guilty. See, God, 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 God knows that the Babylonians are guilty. He knows that they're arrogant. He knows that they're evil. He knows that they're bad. And what probably startles Habakkuk is this, God, I, I, I know we're not good, but we're not as bad as the Babylonians. But what God is doing is God is taking the Babylonians as a scalpel and he's doing work on them. And he's bringing about his plan, not in the way in which Habakkuk was thinking, but the way in which God knew was best. And he says this, he says, but they are deeply guilty. Let's bring that back, please. They are deeply guilty for their own strength is their God. What arrogance. You see, their, their own strength, their own power, their own cruelty, their own evil becomes their God. And no doubt people in that day were saying, and we're to believe that there is a God in heaven, that he's wise and that he's good and that he's great and he's powerful. This doesn't make sense. It didn't to Habakkuk either. You see, when you hit a wall with God, and, and if you're a Christ follower, there'll come a time in your life of where you will hit a wall with God and your faith. You see, Habakkuk's name is to embrace. That's why he confronted God. That's, that's why he's writing this out, because his name means to embrace. His name means to wrestle, to struggle. And what he's doing is he's struggling with God. He's saying, I don't understand all of this. And I want to know, because I know that you're God, I know that you're good, I know that you're great, but I don't understand all that's going on around me. And see, what happens many times to us when we're in that struggle is this right here. Our faith diminishes as our circumstances deteriorate. And when things don't go according to our plan, just like in Habakkuk's day, our faith begins to deteriorate and diminish. You see, when bad things happen, we usually do one of three things. We check out, and what I mean by check out, we just pull back. Okay, if that's who God is and he's not gonna do anything, then I, I'm just gonna pull away. I'm just gonna draw away from him. If he's aloof and indifferent, then I'm not going to pursue him. And some of us are tempted to do that right now. God, it's not working the way that I want. I have this pressure. I feel overwhelmed. I'm full of anxiety, and you're not doing anything. And so the temptation is for you to check out, or maybe not to check out, but maybe to back out. And that is you just walk away from God. Well, I tried church. I tried religion. I tried this thing called faith, and it didn't work. It doesn't work. And what I would say is both responses are futile and fatal. You'll be forever lost. So what do I need to do? I need to talk it out. I need to be like Habakkuk. I need to embrace the struggle. I, I, I need to embrace the situation and, and confront God honestly and then receive God's response with humility. You see, Habakkuk is not saying that there's no hope. He doesn't say that there's not a problem either. Habakkuk lives in reality. He doesn't pretend with God. He doesn't pout with God. You know what he does? He pursues God. That's his name. He embraces. And so the whole theme of Habakkuk, when you read it, is found in Habakkuk chapter two, and he says it like this. He says, the righteous will live by faith. In the midst of all your confusion, in the midst of, of all that which you don't understand, you know what he's saying? The righteous, those who know God, will live by faith. You see, what happens many times, though, is this, is sometimes your experience doesn't add up to the version of faith you were raised with. And you were raised with a certain type of faith. And, and, and it's a faith that, that you think, if I have faith in God, then my life is going to be easy and everything's going to go according to my plan. And nothing bad will ever happen 
to me. Well, what I want you to know is that isn't faith. That's not faith. That's more like magic. And you have to understand that. And your view of faith is what you will filter things through. And so what we need to understand is what faith is not. Faith is not a force or a power. It's not if you have enough faith, God will do whatever you want, no matter what he was planning on. And sometimes we're raised with that. If you just have enough faith, then you know what? You can change your whole situation. You can manipulate God. But faith isn't a power or a force. It's not a formula either. Faith is not a formula. It's not something that you and I have to figure out, that there's a code. And if you get the code right, if you get the formula right, then guess what? You can get whatever you want. That's not true either. And God will just start giving you everything. That's not true. What is faith? Faith is this right here. Faith is the confidence that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he has promised to do. That's what faith really is. You see, Habakkuk is a believer, and God is wanting to mature and deepen his relationship with him. And so what happens is God has allowed this to happen in Habakkuk's life to draw him to God. And maybe you're in that situation right now. You're frustrated, and you're having anxiety, and you feel overwhelmed, and you've brought it to God. And what he wants to do is he wants to give you his presence and his peace. And he wants to develop your faith. You see, listen, every great relationship at the center of it is trust. And God wants you to trust him. Even when you can't see his hands, you'll trust his heart. See, I want to close with this, what faith really is. You see, faith is aligning, aligning with God's way, not our way. Faith is not getting our way. Faith is not getting what we want. Faith is aligning with God's way. He's not your servant. He's not my servant. He's not my bellhop. He's not your bellhop. Faith is not getting what we want in spite of what God wants. It's just not that. And Habakkuk is saying, I want what God wants. He's aligning himself with what God wants. Faith is also this. Faith is seeking understanding from God, not being frustrated with God. It's saying, God, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand what's going on. And I need to understand you because we know Isaiah tells us that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so faith is really saying, God, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to understand you. You see, God doesn't condemn Habakkuk. He doesn't. And so faith is, is seeking to understand. Faith is seeking to understand what God is wanting to do in your life and in my life. And then faith is also this. Faith is believing the best about God, not the worst. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever had somebody tell you the worst about somebody and then you met them? And you're thinking, yeah, this isn't the same person. Or has somebody mentioned things about you that weren't true? And it hurt you. You see, faith is believing the best about God, not the worst. That he's good, that he's faithful, and that he's true. And then faith is also recognizing the difference between hurt and harm. Hurt and harm. Now, if you grew up in an abusive home, this is very hard for you to distinguish because you see the two as one, but it's not. You see, faith is recognizing the difference between hurt and harm, and let me explain it to you this way. You know, if, you've had, if you ever had to go to a physical therapist, because maybe you had hip surgery, you had knee surgery, and they're pulling you out of bed, and they're saying, we need you to get walking. We need you to get up. And you're saying, you're hurting me. You're hurting me. This is painful. Right. But their intent is not to harm you. And God was using the Babylonians to hurt Israel, to get their attention, but not to harm you. And sometimes God hurts us because he wants our attention, 
but he's never there to harm us. And then faith is trusting an unknown future to an all-knowing God. Wow. Faith is trusting an unknown future. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know God. And faith gives us the power and the strength for a better future. And Habakkuk is in a very difficult and tough situation, politically, spiritually, emotionally, and in every way. And he has faith. He says, you know what? I don't know the future. It's unknown, but I know God, and I'm going to trust him that he's in control. I'm going to believe that he knows what is best. The band's going to come, and they're going to lead us in some songs, and we're going to celebrate who God is, that he is the living hope. And that he is one whom we can put our complete faith and trust in. And that we can trust him because we know that he's faithful. We know that he keeps his promises. You see, here's what I want you to understand. Never trade what you do know for what you don't know. We don't know why we're in this season of life. You don't know why you're in that season of life. I don't know why God has allowed this. You don't know why God has allowed this. But here's what I do know. God is good and God is great and God is faithful and he loves me and he's in control. And so I'm going to choose to believe in the goodness of God through everything. So let's sing. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you today for who you are. We thank you that we can have honest conversations with you, that we can come before you and we can lay out our hearts and our frustrations and tell you that we're overwhelmed and tell you that we're anxious and we can just be transparent and vulnerable before you and you welcome and you will come back and you will will share with us your heart and what you want to see happen. And as a back of did it, God, I pray that we would do it, that we would come as Habakkuk found out that there is always hope because of you. And so God, receive our worship, receive our praise. Help us to celebrate you and find out that there truly is hope in the dark. And it's in the person of Jesus. Amen.